pound bass came up and exploded on this thing. My heart was pounding, I was breathing heavy. The minute I landed that fish, it was the most exciting thing that ever Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fish Tech Live Season 3, Episode 8. What an interesting evening this is going to be. We're talking about charts. We're talking about charts in general. This is going to apply to people all around the world. So uh, all my international guys that join me every now and again, I hope you do pop in um, and uh, contribute and ask questions. And if you've got some information, I'll try and keep my eye on the chat box see if I can answer you. But yeah, we're going to be talking about charts. We're talking about the quality of charts. Where are we going from here? We can't always look back and say, oh, we got that wrong. We got that wrong. It's a good idea. You know, it's a good reference. We know where we've gone wrong, but we need to look at the future and say, where are we going now? Are we just going to run out there and just go willy-nilly rescanning, remapping, or are we actually going to put something in place that has got some form of quality control? And that is what we want to do. And I'll tell you why we want to do that. And I want to tell you why we want to do the show tonight about contour charts specifically. It's because, now guys, listen properly now, we want fishermen to get back to fishing. There's too many guys running out there when they should have a rod in their hands and they are going up and down mapping dams and lakes and rivers and you know what, all over the world. And guess what? I know no fishermen that got into fishing to go mapping. So yeah, the guys that have taken on the responsibility to do charts and cartography and bathymetry, etc. Guys like me, I've committed to that. It's our responsibility. Let us do what we are supposed to do. But we need to put something in place that really makes it worthwhile. So that when you guys walk into a store or you go online and you order a chart, you know with 100% confidence that that is a good chart and it's accurate chart and the data was collected properly. So that's where we're going to go. Right, let's see. Who have we got with us this evening? Um, we've got Hannah Rickert, Armand Slavoskachny, we've got Alistair, we've got Kevin Naidu, we've got uh, Robert, we've got John Wickham, we've got Reynard, we've got Roger Evers, Jacques Kuman, Alton Arthur, Clint Skinner, Roger Evers. Hello Roger, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us this evening. We've got Tim, we've got Dirk, we've got Daniel McLaughlin. Hello uh, Daniel, uh, we've got Jimmy Scripturaris. Uh, see, I got that wrong again. Uh, we got Clint. Hey, Clint, how you doing? How do you manage accurate charting in a dam that has serious tree structure? Clint, we will get into that. If you're talking about a dam like, like the whip, there has to be some level of common sense that sticks in there. Dams like that will be a problem. Dams with lots of weed is a problem. We're talking about areas where craft can get in, a propeller can get in there, we can get in deep enough, the sonar can read properly. We're talking about areas that can be measured with sonar properly. That's the aerials that, that we are talking about. Uh, Michael Cannon's joined. Hello, Mark. Uh, Quibus, Cornet's joined us. Hello, Cornet. Michael Cannon, Fish Tech Dogs. There we go. That's how we do it. Right, guys. Um, uh, I'm going to jump straight into this here. I'm going to pop that up there. And I'm going to merge that into there. I need to pop that in there. I need to go back there. Da -da, da -da. Right. Guys, like I said, this is all about... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wow. What's going on here? Has it stopped rolling yet? There we go. Okay, guys, like I said, we're talking about chart quality, all the different types of charts, off the shelf charts, we're talking about uh, DIY charts, we, we're talking about everything. So, let's get started here. Let's look at a little bit of history first. 
Internationally, contour charts have been available for most coastal regions, particularly the Navionics charts. We all know Navionics charts. Inland waters, however, have been less likely to have the same coverage. US users have had the luxury of Lake Master and Navionics, where Europe and Australia only Navionics mostly. I'm saying mostly, there are others, but I'm talking about mostly. Countries like South Africa, where I am, where I am from, my home, uh, we had nothing. Ten years ago, we had absolutely nothing. <clears throat> Garmin brought out a chart in 2009. It was called the Waterways 2009. was essentially a, um, a sediment uh, collection that they got from MapIT, and they converted it, and they put it out there. It was something. It was the first time that you could actually see some form, some form of contours on a, uh, a fish finder chart plotter in South Africa and it was fantastic and obviously that sparked off the need and the hunger and that's where things got got started. <clears throat> Navionics contour quality. How good is Navionics data? Where did they get this data from? Where was this database? How was it converted? How accurate is it? Anyway, um, the, the, the quality is dependent on the area around the world, which is quite right. I mean, some places I've seen some footage, I've seen videos, I've seen YouTube videos <clears throat> where it really looks pretty good. Um, South Africa, uh, particularly our inland waters, there's nothing. It was absolutely nothing. Offshore isn't bad, but it's not great. I've fished a lot of reefs with a Navionics chart, and I can tell you now that Navionics chart tells me there's nothing there. Other days we've gone out, we've been through two tanks of fuel, we've gone offshore to go and fish a pinnacle. Guess what? There's no pinnacle there. So not, not so great, okay? A classic example that I can actually prove to you is one of Alawal Shoal. I've dived, uh, scuba dived Alawal Shoal many, many times. And as a fisherman, we have fished the outer ledge. Obviously, the Alawal Shoal is a national heritage site, and we cannot fish on the shoal, but we do fish the outer ledge, and we get some. And we used to get some incredible fish out there. Guys like Mick Clark and these type of guys, the jet ski guys and whatnot, will know exactly what I'm talking about. But I did a little article. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. I got a bit of a frog in my throat tonight. Um, okay, let's just have a look at this. That up on the top left of your screen right now, uh, above me, okay, <clears throat> that is what you see on your Navionics, uh, Platinum Plus, uh, Southeast charts, the old gold charts, etc. Okay, that is meant to be the Alawal Shoal. If you look at the picture to the right of me, over there, okay, I was out doing a little bit of fishing, uh, the fishing turned off, I got a little tuna, and then it just shut down. I was on a jet ski and I thought, you know what? It's such a beautiful day. I'm out here. I've got a tank of gas. Let me just run up and down here with my fishing jet ski and uh, record this. I think I was using a Fish Elite 640C, a little fish finder back then. And uh, that's what it actually produced. I popped it into Dr. Depth, a program some of you will remember from many years ago. And that's what it spat out. Um, we I then converted it to, back in those days, it was called the LCM, the Lawrence Chart Map, as you can see right behind me here, okay? If you compare that to what's above me, you can see there's a massive, massive difference. Above me, the Navionics Chart, the way it still is today, I can tell you now, Alawal Shoal does not look anything like that. Whereas the one directly uh, over my shoulder here, that is what it looks like. And if you look at it in 3D, a little bit further over there, um, <clears throat> uh, that's using uh, Dr. Depth had a nice little 3D feature where you can see it in 3D and you can see exactly how the northern pinnacles on Alawal Shoal actually looked. So accuracy with those off the shelf charts, with the Navionic charts, not so great. <clears throat> But what happened recently? Let's let's let's. Okay, that was ten years ago. Let's bring it a little bit more more recent. Uh, Navionics contour quality. In recent years, the fish and chip overlay was introduced, offering ten times the contour detail. Bang! And was that a bit of marketing? Get your new Platinum Plus chart. It's got a fish and chip overlay. It's ten times the uh, uh, data. It's got ten times the contours. Very very exciting stuff. But here comes the question that nobody asked at the time. Where did this additional data come from? 
Were our oceans resurveyed, or did a computer merely generate minor contours between the major contours? I think we all know the answer to that. And guys, is that really so great? Okay, have a look at that now. Here's the one above me. That's just your average. The old um, Navionics chart for Alawal Shoal. And to my left, that there is now with the sonar chart um, uh, overlay turned on with these multiple contours. Between you and me, I don't know what that is. If you think the first one was bad, that computer just generated, if, 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 it, if, it, if there was a poor show with the first one, we took the poor show and we made it 10 times a poorer show. So that is not great information. Um, as somebody that buys a chart and fishes a reef and you've got that type of information, my recommendation to you is to turn it off or just go to your sonar page and just look at the actual sonar, your 2D sonar. Forget about the charts completely or put your own waypoints on there. That has got no use to man nor beast. <clears throat> right, now we've got something very exciting and it's very, very recent. It's called CMAP Precision. You guys would have noticed from the beginning of the year, uh, from the Bassmaster Classic, uh, leading up until now, there's been multiple videos put up there where the guys are really excited about these new uh, CMAP precision charts. Okay, this is the latest chart available from Navico. These charts are not converted. Sorry, I'm just reading this. These charts are not converted data, but new data that has been recorded on the water. So they've actually got onto the water and they've recorded this information. The way I do it, the way a lot of us do it, this is how we do it. Okay. Uh, compared to the typical Navinix chart, it is a huge improvement. Let's have a look. Is, this is taken from a video uh, where one of the chaps from CMAP uh, got on with a fisherman in South Florida. And um, I'm not too sure what this lake is called, but he put his Navionix chart in there. And you can see what's on the Navionix chart. And lo and behold, he flicks over to uh, the CMAP uh, Florida Genesis uh, 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 chart and you can see there's a lot more information going on there a lot more information <clears throat> sorry let me just read have a look at my any messages hello Kurne, how you doing i'm glad you guys had fun on uh, albert falls man you were just waiting for me to leave with the camera and then you catch all those big fish yeah no it's all right it's all right I'll remember that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, uh, who else is here? Evaldas. Hello, Evaldas. Colleen is here. Janrich. Mornay. Desiree. Hey, my cousin Desiree. Uh, Ernest. Uh, Bertus. Yaku. Stephen. Rashid. JJ. Uh, Darren Hockley. Hello, Darren. How are you doing? Keith Falconer. Emilio Antonuccio. Antonuccio. Hello, Emilio. Welcome. Welcome. Right. So that's again. CMAP uh, precision, great chart, okay? The US Bass Pros, like I said, are very excited about this. There's a ton of videos out there. Guys, please go and have a look at this video. Go to YouTube, look for this. Um, I think the little um, thumbnail for the video is this that's up on my screen at the moment. It's a great video um, where, where Mike Iaconelli is talking about these charts with the custom shading and all that type of thing. And he's, he's really worked these charts out. And, you know, for, for somebody like him that really spends the time behind his electronics, I mean, this guy is just really reaping the benefit of these charts. And I'm not talking about just Mark. I'm talking about the guys fishing the FLW. I'm talking about all the guys. I'm talking about our local guys in, in South Africa when it, when it comes to the fish tech charts. Remember, we're talking about contour charts here. High definition, one foot interval contour charts. That's what I've been doing for 10 15 years, okay, using the doctor depth. But now, um, um, Lawrence, Navico, Hummingbird, um, Garmin, everybody's cotton on to this and they know the pressure's on. The race is on to create these, these fantastic new high definition contour charts. We've been doing it for many, many years. So it's quite nice to see uh, everybody else starting to catch up. Um, uh, Skeet Reese, he was raving about the charts as well for his application. Um, like I said, there's dozens of videos out there, uh, too many to even mention. 
Next thing, the salt water guys. Hang on, there's a message there. Uh, Emilio, yes, hi, Emilio. Roger Eva says, John, do you perhaps know if these CMAP HD maps are also available in the Netherlands? Roger, I don't. I actually don't. Um, if you go onto the in onto Lawrence.com and you go to charts, um, I think it's called list. Just you you you'll have to play around there, but it's under their products, charts, uh, list, and go to C map. And I think there's about 13 pages of charts, so there's a lot there. Just scroll through them and see if there's anything there for the Netherlands. However, I must warn you, if it's anything like South Africa at the moment, to me, the South African stuff looks very much like Navionics that seems to just be converted somehow to CMAP, which that's not great. Um, these CMAP precision charts these are actual areas that have been driven out by a boat, re-scanned, not found on some 50-year-old uh, database, government database somewhere like Navionics did. No, I'm talking about actually on the water recording from scratch. So let's, let's, let's see what, what happens. Uh, watch the rest of the show and you'll see where I'm going with this thing tonight. But anyway, um, then there's CMAP Reveal. Now, guys, this is something that I haven't even had the opportunity to play with. I can't afford it. The, the hardware is extremely expensive, very, very expensive. It's called multi-beam. Multi-beam technology to side to, to, to scan the, the bottom. I see um, uh, Navico recently launched uh, CMAP Reveal. And this is some really incredible stuff, but it is limited to, to coverage. Um, you'll see it's now covering the Gulf of Mexico, Florida, and they say more coverage coming soon. But guys, the way that this multi-beam technology works <clears throat> and the detail that you get from it, as opposed to a cone that is averaging out, you'll see I'm going to talk about that shortly, and trying to convert these... Um, I, I don't want to call it prehistoric because it's all we really got at the moment and we're only now just starting to move into this multi-beam technology but it needs to become affordable that the average person can get out there well, I'm not talking about average person every single fisherman I'm talking about guys like myself a uh, small little uh, 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 cartography businesses can afford something like that and give their customers that benefit right now it's it's just I mean half a million rand for a transducer you you do the math um, <clears throat> but anyway and I mean with the way the technology has changed today they say yeah but it's all the hardware and it measures this and it measures that let me tell you if you take a flight controller that big that's in a drone how much technology is happening that's been developed by the companies like DJI, um, Holybro, all these type of guys. That technology that has been, uh, been created for drones, I'm talking about flying drones now, you apply that to multi-beam in a little thing this big, I promise you it'll be 10 times as fast as the hardware they, they're currently using. That They say, oh, you've got to be in a big boat and whatnot. No, no, no. You can take a thing that can fit in your pocket for a drone and apply that and rewrite the software for multi-beam. Uh, and it'll all work, believe you me, and work better probably. So let's let's give the guys from WASP a little bit of a chance to catch up with technology and uh, we will see fantastic things happen for fishermen around the world. Right, we're going to go back in history. We're going to start talking about bathymetry. Right, who's here? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Rulof van der Weyck says, uh, uh, Roger Evers, Navion had it work, uh, that he had live chart. Yes, Rulof, uh, but I think, uh, Rulof, what um, Roger was talking about was CMAC precision. But anyway, we're going to talk about live just now. So you stick around. Uh, hello, Freddie, how are you doing? See you on Friday drive safe. Um, right, guys, uh, DIY bathymetry. Those of you who have been following me on the forums and whatnot from many, many years ago, um, you will remember Dr. Death. This is how we got started with these charts. Uh, this I'm very grateful once, I think I mentioned it every single show I do. Dr. Bruce Sampson, he had a website called hightechfishing.com. 
Now that was that's where I learned all these things. So I, I always say to Doc in my shows, thank you. I'm so glad I found your, your website. You were extremely helpful. And with your help, Fishtech, uh, that was essentially the beginning of, of Fishtech. So uh, once again, uh, Doc Samson, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so basically Dr. Depth was a bathymetry program. It was developed by a uh, Parapalin uh, from Sweden and it became extremely popular. Uh, I was a dealer for them here in South Africa and we sold a number of programs. Um, but unfortunately, Dr. Depth uh, a few years ago was withdrawn from the market as it was bought out by Johnson Outdoors. And you guys will now know it, particularly the Hummingbird guys out there. Dr. Depth is now rebranded as AutoChart Pro, the software AutoChart Pro. That's what it is now. And the support all comes through, through there. Unfortunately, the biggest downside to that is, whereas with Dr. Depth, you could export the chart, put it onto a little card, a little SD card you bought at China Mall or whatever, and you're good to go. Not with Auto Chart Pro. No, you've got to buy a card, a blank card for 1,800 Rand. Yes. So that you can put data from the software onto there. And the software is over 4,000 Rand. So brace yourself. Phew, I don't know how the Oaks even do that. I, I, it's beyond me. But anyway, uh, good luck to them. Um, but when that horrific thing happened, um, Matt Fender of Reefmaster stepped in and everyone was panicking. What do we do now? What are we going to do? Blah, blah, blah. And along came Reefmaster, a fantastic program and really Reefmaster is just a brilliant, brilliant program. There's, I, I wouldn't even begin to imagine how many people around the world use it. Uh, so it's it's a great program. It's got multiple layers. It's got Sonar Lab. It's got Side Scan. It's got all sorts of things. Uh, it, it really is a fantastic program. If any of you ever want to dabble a little bit and play around a little bit with uh, uh, bathymetry software, please go to reefmaster.co.au, I think it is, or UK, AU, Australia. Anyway, uh, just just uh, in your Google bar, just uh, search, put there Reefmaster, it'll pop up quite, quite soon. Really, really nice program. I still use it today. This is what I create my contour charts with. I really, really love it. Right, next, let's just see what's happening here. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, the guys have got it. They're all sorted. Right. Social mapping. Social mapping is a big thing. I mean, when social mapping first came out, I was like, wow, I like this. This is amazing. What it is, Inside Genesis was launched. OK, um, Inside Genesis was the first of was one of the first platforms to offer this uh, a service where users could upload their sonar logs to a server. And within a certain time, the data was available free of charge to anybody that registered. So all you had to do, if you've got a little fish finder with a, with a chart plotter on it and a card slot, you put your card in there, you go to sonar, advanced, log sonar, and you drive around. At the end of the day, you take the card out, you upload it, you first got to register and you upload it to uh, CMAP Genesis. And a week or so later, voila, you can go onto their social mapping, which I'll show you what it looks like, and you can download it free of charge. Uh, free of charge. M massive amounts of information started coming in from around the world. Navionics very quickly also realized the value of this and offered the same thing. And that happened quite, quite soon. <laughs> this is uh, CMAP Genesis. In the beginning, it was called Go or Go Free. As you remember, it was actually put down the side of my mapping craft, go free. Um, you can see from, you know, above me here, the coverage around the world is quite tremendous. Uh, if you look at my left here, a little bit further over, far over there, you can see the coverage off uh, Durban, that's Durban Harbor. You can see Inanda, you can see Albert Falls, you can see Midmar. Um, <clears throat> I've zoomed in close here on um, Midmar, and I like Midmar. Midmar is a really, really good. Guys, if any of you want a very, very good chart with two and a half thousand Rand free of charge, go here and go on to CMAP Genesis and go and do download your um, Midmar chart in particular. It's a very, very accurate chart, and nobody's ruined it. 
nobody's gone in there when the dam was low and recorded and ruined the chart which is unfortunate what i'm going to talk about now so yeah cmap genesis really really great tool <clears throat> right next live mapping hang on hang on hang on uh, let's have a look hang on there's something else i wanted to show you where was it now you know what it's not there i wanted to show you that's a pity guys i wanted to show you a section of um albert falls that had a problem it might come up later yes it actually comes up later i'm going to talk about depth correction later sorry i got lost my my space there um right okay let me try and catch up then we got live mapping the first person to bring out live mapping was auto chart live now the reason why they did it was dr depth had a live option you could take a tablet or a little laptop on the boat with you you could take a rs232 port you could connect it to your uh, unit and you could stream from your um, um, um i think it was your nmea 0183 output you could put that into a serial an old serial port into your laptop and you could actually create live mapping so it wasn't too much of a stretch of the imagination for uh, parapellant to introduce that quite quickly at uh, hummingbird uh, johnson outdoors just the ability to create a live chart while you're driving around particularly if you're using a substandard chart something at a really poor quality this was just absolutely mind-blowing nobody had ever seen this before and it was color and it was beautiful and it worked so it really was a wonderful tool and i can tell you now hummingbird sold a lot of units because of that one feature next was navionics they brought out a thing called sonar chart live with a subscription and you had to have a valid subscription and you had to pay and you had to do this and you had to do that and you had to buy the original chart it was a little bit complicated and bringing up the rear most recently uh, oh yes of course there was um quick draw by garmin garmin also came in there around about the same time as navionics and uh, last but not least bringing up the rear navico eventually uh, brought in uh, Genesis Live as we know it today. So there's your Auto Chart Live that was on the Hummingbird one. Uh, there's your Quick Draw on the Garmin, and then uh, Navico brought out to Genesis Live. And one of the big things that was so awesome about Genesis Live, and it happened pretty quickly, pretty much off the bat, you could do custom shading go onto youtube have a look what at one of my videos go through my videos there you'll see uh, um, custom shading of uh, genesis live uh, quite a nice video that right how accurate is diy you know do it yourself mapping social mapping live mapping we know that off the shelf is just shocking okay sure we've now got cmap precision so there's a big improvement there's a great improvement coming but what i'm going to be talking about here with diy social and live mapping i'm talking about guys i'm not even talking about i'm talking about me i'm talking about you i'm talking about anybody that does any form of mapping whether it's contributing to social whether it's live on your unit no matter what these are things you need to know including the guys from cmap and whoever that are driving around uh, lake master and recording data who's monitoring how this is done that's the question but anyway uh, this is where the water starts to become very murky real quick as there's a lot more to, to a good chart than just randomly driving around creating charts and i can tell you software allows you to create these massive interpolation limits which means your, your passes from one to the other can be very wide, but we're going to talk about that later. Um, so you've got to do this properly, and you need to know what the restrictions are with this technology. Otherwise, what are you doing? You are just adding one, you're creating one sub-quality chart with another one, and you're just wasting petrol, and you're wasting time when you should be fishing with your children, um, just enjoying yourself, but you going through thousands and millions of liters around the world of petrol driving around creating poor quality data i'm not saying everybody 
but a lot do. Okay, what are the factors that are influencing chart quality? Uh, any messages here? Uh, let me just have a look. No, we're good. And we're halfway through. We're good. We're good to go. I'm a little, I'm lagging. I'm a little bit behind on my sheets, but we're good to go. Okay, factors influencing chart, chart quality. I've just, I've just listed six here, but we, we can, if we really sit down and think about it, there are more. But it's your transducer choice and installation. How is it installed on the boat? What transducer are you using? We're going to talk about that. Craft, hull design, we're going to talk about that. Water quality, weather conditions, uh, survey path, grid and speed, GPS installation, quality of GPS, quality of how was it on the day? Estimated position error. Was there some military maneuver going on in the Mediterranean that throws the whole world's GPS out? Because remember, the military's got control over that. Okay, so yeah, uh, these are things that will affect the charts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to deal with is transducer choice and installation. Right, a lot of guys out there, remember guys, I'm concentrating about fresh water here, here tonight. The guys that are going out into the deep blue and doing big stuff like that, um, the base, the principle is going to apply. But remember, I'm concentrating about on inland waters, protected waters for these charts, okay? Uh, as you'll see, there's a silhouette of Amy, my autonomous survey vessel. Um, in this example here, I've showed her with a TM150 uh, medium chirp. You can see the width of the cone. Now, guys, I'm only going to give this transducer, I'm talking about for, for mapping now. I'm only going to give this transducer one star. As fantastic as that wide coverage is for fish in the water column, for bottom definition and accuracy, it's actually poor. Anybody that's tried to track the bottom with a TM150 will know what I'm talking about. It doesn't like it. It's great for the water column, not so good for the bottom. So one star for the old TM150. What is next on, on the list? We've got the new Hook 2. It's got a wider coverage area. Um, <clears throat> Emilia says, very interesting. Thanks, Emilia. I'm, I hope I'm not boring everybody. I get so involved with my stories in my head and, you know, I'm very passionate about it. I think everyone else is passionate about it, but I know that's always not, not the case. Um, but thank you for that comment. Um, uh, the, the hook two is, is 200 kilohertz, but it's a wider beam. Again, uh, it's not as wide as the TM150, so I'm going to give that two stars. I don't recommend it, but if it's all you got, do it. Um, next, three stars is your Legacy Series Lawrence 200 kilohertz element. This has been used on the HST, WSBL, it's on the three. A three in one, the total scan, the PDT, the DFSBL, the XI5 uh, trolling motors even got that same little element built in into it. Uh, the uh, 200 kilohertz is a 20 degree cone, not too bad. I'm going to give that three stars. Good enough, good enough to to do the job. Right then, there's a couple of transducers out there. I'm not going to list them all, but this is what we use. This is what I use. I use a 10 degree cone. I want the maximum. If I'm coming up a ledge like what you see Amy coming up there now, I want Amy to know that's the rising uh, bottom. That's the ledge. There's a flat. There's the next ledge and there's a flat again. I want Amy to know what those stages of change are. And I want her to know it very, very precisely. And that is why uh, a, a, a typical transducer you can use here, the one that I particularly like, one of them, it's not the only one that I use, but one of them is the MRP66. Those of you who have known me for a long time will know that I really do enjoy that transducer, particularly for my charts, but it's not the only one that I use. Uh, good evening, Jens. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Right, so keep that in mind before you go out mapping. Okay, now we're talking about uh, your hull design. This does affect your charts, especially if you've got a bass boat with a step or whatnot, or your hull design. Let's just have a look at a couple of factors that, that make a difference here. Basically, up straight up above me here, you've got a big bass boat there. These things love flying. These are racing boats. Let's not fool ourselves. 
They're racing boats with a lot of locker, locker space to put baits, rods and reels and other toys. And a nice big deck to stand on like you're fishing off, off a jetty. Okay, and they fly. Okay, these are, these are racing boats. They're not designed for sonar. They never were. Guys are driving around. Unfortunately, you are restricted to idle only. Anything more than that, you get too much turbulence. It just becomes a little bit of a mess. Unless you really put your transducer right at the bottom. I know some guys put it inside the hole and they say that works. Cool for you. Awesome. For me, not for me. Um, then you've got your guys running little tinnies. Tinnies is a nice, easy, simple boat. Tinnies and rubber ducks and all these type of things. Man, these are nippy little boats. They're cheap to run, easy to trailer, really all round easy boats. How good are they for uh, sonar mapping? Not good at all. The boat is not designed for it. That hole, the, uh, there's all sorts of influences. There's rivets, there's little dents that the thing gets, creates bubbles running over the transducer. Um, very, very risky. For me, it's, it, it's just too much of a risky uh, hole design for good sonar because what is the hole designed for is it a displacement hole is it designed for slicing through the water or is it designed for popping up onto a plane and zipping across the top of the water that is what it's designed for and that is not the ideal thing you want for sonar then of course right behind me here okay this is extreme <laughs> i just found this picture on, on the net but the bottom quality of your boat particularly those 6 to 12 inches preceding your transducer. What is the quality of that? Is that nicely polished and nicely buffed? Or is it a rough, dirty, chipped? I mean, just one chip, eh? If you've got one chip and just by bad luck, it's directly in line with your transducer and it creates a little bubble line over your transducer, sorry for you, bad, bad sonar. I can't tell you how often I've found that on a boat. And then of course to my my left is i'm showing a highly effective type hole displacement type hole that can go right through your range your permissible range for collecting data okay and still remain to be a displacement hole and just slice through the water and that is how i came up with this craft it's essentially uh, three surf skis there's a double surf ski in the middle and two single surf skis on on the side and I've been using this craft for a number of years now and it has done a fantastic job it really and truly it was the perfect perfect design for collecting good quality sonar so it it did its job unfortunately Amy has now put me out of business because the artificial intelligence makes me look like a fool when it comes to accuracy and driving but uh, we'll talk about that now <clears throat> so yeah that's the type of hole that you want for good mapping uh, next is water quality and level look weeds everybody knows you can't drive around collecting uh, good sonar over weeds and and what have you it just it just doesn't work sorry there's a message there uh, john henry potkin says hi john what's the best speed for for mapping um john for me with my craft 16 kilometers per hour that was where i said that's my limit that's the maximum speed it was a comfortable speed i didn't i, I could get even at that speed i could get a reasonable side scan uh, if I was doing the deeper stuff, obviously in the shallows, you don't want to be doing that speed. Um, the quality, you get quite a knock in, in the quality. But for sonar, I'd say uh, maximum speed, 23 k's an hour, absolute maximum. But uh, between 16 and 20, I'd say that's a, that's a good speed for, um, for, for collecting sonar data. If your transducer is set up correctly and your hull is nice and polished and the, 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 the sole of your transducer is nice and clean and polished and it's not creating bubbles on itself. Because if there are any marks or scratches in it, the faster you go, it will create little micro bubbles. And if it lines up with your transducer, uh, as Murphy's Law will, um, you are going to lose quality and that is not, ideal um okay 
We're talking about depth correction here. I, I, I said, you know, stay away from weeds and stay away from trees. I mean, you, you can get around the trees and what have you, but obviously with the autonomous craft, that's a little bit difficult. That's got to be driven manually. But these are restrictions, but they're common sense restrictions, not to mention people on the water. Stay away from people. Don't go mapping on weekends and on holidays. You'll have a horrible day. Okay. What about dams that have that are going through droughts. Unfortunately, here in South Africa, we don't have a database saying by how many feet our dams were down. Our uh, dam levels are done in percentages. I don't know why they do that, because every dam I know of has got a, like a ruler thing in feet and meters or whatever by the dam wall, and they measure it and they put it down somewhere. But then someone does some math thing and converts it to percentage, which is essentially useless data. You want to know the feet. Yes, put the percentage there. Maybe good to know. But the first thing you need to know, by how many feet is the dam down? And do yourself a favor on a South African database. Try and find out by how many feet your local dam is down. It's not there, Baba. And we can't blame the new government because the old government didn't do it either. So they were just as in the bush. But anyway. Um, now, Albert Falls, I submitted when this whole CMAP Genesis thing uh, first started, then before it was CMAP, it was GoFree and Insight, Insight Genesis, sorry. This is the first data, this basic background that you see behind me here, this is what I uploaded, okay? Now, and this is from years ago, and it's accurate. Let me tell you, it is extremely accurate. I drove it out. I actually built a boat back there called the Bass Glider. It was an aluminum catamaran, and I drove this out manually, no autopilots, nothing, and it went well. Then all of a sudden, Lauren South Africa decided to have a competition where they're going to give um, units away to, to three people for the most amount of data collected. So one smart aleck, decided to take his family away for the long weekend and he's going to sit on Albert Falls Dam and go through a couple of tanks of fuel and drive around the dam willy-nilly. He then submitted that data to Insight Genesis, but he didn't do the depth correction for how much the dam had dropped when the drought first started. And he literally ruined the Albert Falls chart completely. I complained about it. It took, I think it took about three years, but his data was eventually removed and then it was back to just my original data which worked great but look what's happening here now some smart aleck has gone and fished you can see above me there's a little spot right on the corner of the edge of, of the of, of the ridge and then there's another one there that looks like iron man's mask okay he obviously sat there and dilly dallied and fished in those two areas for a long time and just hit record. When he got home, came up with a brain idea to upload that to Insight Genesis and not do the depth correction. So unfortunately, there are a number of areas and there's charts all around South Africa that this has happened to and the data is ruined. And to, to fix this, I can only imagine from, uh, you know, the guys that control the social charts, how much effort goes in into this i'm sure there's a program that they can do to to see okay this data is going over good data let's not not use it but anyway i might be barking up the wrong tree there right factors influencing charts uh, survey path grid and speed okay now here's an interesting part are the guys still here yeah we've got a couple of guys still watching fantastic but uh, the guys that have left or the guys that have missed, missed tonight, hopefully they get to see this. And this is important. What is, okay, let's, let's talk about the standard live coverage. When you're driving around love, what is the interpolation? What is the coverage? What is the coverage that that um, uh, technology's got? It's 50 meters. That's 150 feet, okay? So... Here's a case now where I've said, imagine if I'm using Amy, my autonomous craft, I've got her on auto chart live or quick draw with a Garmin or whatever, and I'm doing and I'm using my maximum interpolation. Okay. And just by sod's luck, first pass is up near the shallows, running parallel lines to the bank. The right hand side is pass two 
and slap bang in the middle is this little ledge with a flat and a ledge again perfect for bass okay if you look at the top that colored bar at the top that's effectively what your chart is going to look like once it's created that pass one and pass two and join those sonar logs together now if you block the bottom with your hand don't look at the bottom just look at the green uh, that colored bar up the top can you tell me where a ledge is those of you that know how to read contour charts where's the ledge there you can't see it you didn't drive over it okay let's half that let's bring it down to 25 meters what's going to happen here I feel you're going to get a slight concentration. You'll have your even bars, uh, um, um, contours, your major contours, minor contours, going to left and right. But halving it, there's a ledge there. There'll be a little bit of a concentration. So you'll see a couple of lines a little bit closer, but I don't know if it's going to be good enough to really catch your eye. Okay. When I do my passes, my parallel passes, I recently did uh, the whole of Albert Falls, uh, the majority of Albert Falls with Amy, and uh, I set her to 18 meters. Her passes were 18 meters apart. So let's say I just got very lucky and one was up on the shallow side, one was directly above the uh, ledge and one was to the right. Yes, you're definitely going to get a little bit of a concentration there in the middle. You're going to see something's definitely going on there. But it's not ideal. The reason why I only did the parallel to the shoreline passes and why I feel I can get away with it is because I was recording side scan at the same time. So that pass one that you see there, that pass one would have seen that ledge as clear as day. It would have shown the ledge. You'd see a beautiful sonic shadow on it. Pass two, the sonar would be too far over it. That will show nothing going out to the deep, down, down to the depth. So the, my customers that buy my fish tech charts will go contours. Okay, nothing too exciting to see there. Let's swap to mosaic. And whoa, where's that ledge come from? Okay, but what should I have done? If I really want to be, you know, uh, cross my T's, dot my I's, do this 100%, what should I do to get that ledge? How would you record that ledge 100%? Well, not 100% because remember, it's sonar, it's a cone, but the closest you could possibly get. And there is only one way. You've got to create a grid. A grid immediately doubles the workload. If you've got a five-day week to do a body of water, you're now in for 10 days, or get two Amy's. Put two Amy's in and get, get the dam done that way, okay? But it's a lot of work. And the reason why it works, this image will, will show you. When the craft is coming from the shallows directly up, I mean from the depths directly up the shallows, and you're using a nice narrow beam, nine degree, 10 degree transducer, it's going to pick the first little ledge up. Look at the chart at the top. Look at the colors. It's immediately going to register. Bang! There's a ledge there. Then 18, it's level because there's a flat there. Okay. Then whoop, there's another little ledge. It's going to register it. And then it's a gradual one from 15 feet up to 9 feet again. It turns around. It does another 18 meters further on. And it now it comes back down. Gets to 12 feet, gets to 15 feet, whoop, little ledge, flattens out at 18 again, back down to 20 on a little ledge, and then works its way down to 28 feet. Okay, that is a first class five star chart that anybody would be proud of and would be very, very effective. And for that, you wouldn't even need the side scan. But I, all my charts includes the, the side scan. And yeah, so if you're not doing side scan, you must include... You, it must be a grid. So my question is, these guys running around with CMAP, uh, precision and all that recording, are they doing grids? Are they doing perfect grids? Or are they, or could they be missing? Hmm. Nobody knows. Okay. So that's what you need to do. 
And then the last thing on my list, there's obviously more things that can contribute to it, but GPS and estimated position error. If your GPS is not located directly above your transducer, you've got a gap. Now, if you're doing a ledge like what we're just doing here, if your GPS position and your transducer position isn't exactly lined up or corrected with software, when you go up and down this ledge, not only are you going to see the ledge, but it's going to look like the ledge is corrugated because of this little lag in GPS position as opposed to sonar pinging the bottom not lining up. And when you come from 180 degrees, it amplifies it by two. Okay, so there's something to, to keep in mind. <clears throat> and then, of course, GPS lately, holy moly it's all over the place I, I i don't know what you guys are finding around the world but i can tell you here in south africa sure man i don't know sometimes it's goodish other times it's really really bad okay quality control what should a chart include now i know my charts don't currently include this but guys mark my words i'm making a commitment here today 13th of August, is it 13? Yes, 13th of August, okay? 13th of August. I'm telling you now, include in my charts, I'm going to put it on my website where you can get the chart, um, but I can only do it from now going forward, okay? Uh, obviously, the dates of the survey surveys, if it's a dam that's had multiple surveys, all those dates will be put there. The dam levels and height percentage at the time of the survey I can work out by how many feet the dam is, is actually down, so that will be included. I promise to include this information going forward from this day forward. What transducers used? Is it a narrow beam, a medium, or a wide? The type of craft that's used? Um, did Amy do it? Did I borrow a craft? Was I back on my old mapping craft? I want to, or at least say type of hole. Maybe not say this is, I was on. Garfield or I was on the rows of Centurion or whatever, okay? Um, but I'll say it's a tinny type hole, it's a rubber duck hole, it's a what type of hole? Is it a displacement hole? That information needs to be included in the spec sheet for the charts so you know what type of craft was used for this. The survey path, was it a grid? Was it a parallel? The survey path distance between the passes. Obviously, for the shallow water, you're going to do narrow uh, uh, passes. For the deeper water, you're going to do larger uh, uh, passes if it's a really big dam or lake. Uh, for our smaller dams, just keep it the same throughout, you know. But for those really big dams uh, or big lakes, you'd have to in increase that. And then some information about the skipper. Was it autonomous? In my case, was it Amy? Or was it me? Or did I hire somebody or employ, us, employ somebody to to do it and is this a proper skipper i mean should he even be on on the water um so these are type of things that i think uh, need to be included under the specs of of the charts so essentially what i'm saying is uh off the shelf charts i regard my uh, fish tech charts as off the shelf charts uh, uh cmap uh precision uh reveal uh Lake Master, uh, Garmin, Blue Vision, whatever. We, we need to step our game up. Seriously, we need to step our game up and give our customers some really, really first class charts. Okay. The problem is the world is a very, very big place. And where, where, where do you start? Do you just say, oh, this is what we've got to do and you don't give a solution? No. I've got a solution. I've been working on this project for four years now. I've developed a craft that can be easily transported, doesn't need a trailer, can be lifted up, one person can pick it up, a woman can pick it up, put it on the roof of her car, put two of them on her car, and she's got a little business. And she can go out and she can put petrol in there, uh, a, a full battery, hit the sonar, 12 hours later, it comes back. Okay, that can be done. Um, Amy, my artificial intelligence mapping, that's where the name actually comes from. It's basically a 3.2 meter trimaran powered by a small gas powered motor. Um, I had a picture of it somewhere. 
I'll come back to that. There it is. Uh, let's just merge that back into there. Okay, there we go. That's my promotional thing for Amy. That's a side view. This was the uh, prototype that I built. That's the side view. And there's the top view. So as you can see, it's a, it's a really unique little craft. I've never uh, seen anything like it. On the net i haven't copied anybody um oh dear there it goes okay um it really is uh michael cannon says fresh check charts are the industry leaders by far well done john amy uh will revolutionize the fishing game worldwide mike i believe it i'd like to believe it is it a pop dream it's certainly a dream but i don't think it's a pop dream uh, somebody's going to be wise enough to 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 embrace this and i think it definitely will, will will work so thanks for that comment um you know we're in the fourth industrial revolution right now everybody's talking about it you know and some people are worried about their jobs and i don't like the idea where there's a really good job where a human can do a good job i mean he can really produce a great product he's actually possibly even better at the job but along comes a machine does more or less what he can do and he loses his his job that's not going to be a great industrial revolution let me tell you not at all uh, but there are some things that artificial intelligence does do better driving dead straight well not dead straight but perfect paths with incredible accuracy for hours and hours and hours on 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 end like what you need for uh, sonar mapping, 100%. This is an application for artificial intelligence. And Amy is the solution to this. Yes, there's boats out there if you go on the internet. I haven't invented uh, uh, autonomous servo vessels. Let me tell you, that's a huge industry. It's a massive industry. But this niche, this protected water craft that I've cottoned onto with, with Amy, just the design of her, the way she's powered, the way she runs, the way she works is unique. There's nothing else on the internet close to it. I've just recently seen somebody's copied it to a version, something, but they've still got a long way to go compared to what I've put in into Amy. Amy is a full production craft, something that could be a, a, a improved still going forward. But um, yeah, it's, I think it's, it's the right thing. Um, the other thing is a single supervisor could monitor a, mon a, a, a number of craft. Uh, you could have one guy, well, like what I'm going to be doing now, I've got another one coming now that I'm busy putting together. Uh, uh, Gary Lee Clark has built me a new one, ultra, ultra light, beautiful. And I'm going to be, I'll now run two Amy's on the water. And if I go into a really large body of water, um, I might have three or four on on the water and one person can monitor them because you've got telemetry coming to your phone or a device or a tablet or a smart whatever and you can monitor all of them so you can get really good in information so <clears throat> right uh international networking the basically what i'm what i'm saying is and i would really love a big company to embrace this and take this on and you know buy into my concept and take me on to be part of the program um, where we can offer a franchise of sorts to individuals around the world. Uh, we supply the craft, we supply the training, we, we certify them uh, that they've been on training, they know what they're doing, they're going to stay within those parameters, they're not going to muck about and create poor data. Um, uh, franchisees are only responsible for data collection, they don't do any a, a map creation themselves they just go out they collect data the da the data is submitted to a cloud server for for processing a central house processing it division handles all of that and remuneration for these individuals these little small business operators is basically area covered the quality of their recordings it should be good if they did their training properly um, and then the value of those areas is it big tournament area is it you know how 
how much in demand is that particular area and you base the remuneration on that and the guys can make some really really nice money and obviously the more craft that he takes on uh, he leases or whatever or buys or, or uh, you know we haven't gone into the details of that um, he's getting more acreage you know if he's got one craft creating so many acres a day and he's got two craft that's double he's got three it's three times for, for, well you you know what I'm talking about okay so that's what what we hope to do this fish tech proposal that I'm been talking about now uh, obviously in a little bit more detail than what I've said now um, I've sent a copy to Navico I've sent a copy to Garmin and I've sent a copy to Hummingbird and um, we'll just have to wait and see if they cotton on to what's going on um, alternatively um, I will push this thing and promote it internationally myself and because I believe in it, I believe this is going to be a truly, truly wonderful program that is going to collect good quality charts. And why do we want to do that? It's for you, the fishermen. That's why we want to do it. We want you to get back to fishing. And guys, that is really, that is what it's all about. You didn't get into fishing to go mapping. No. You got into fishing to go fishing. And guys, that's what it's all about. We want to create really, really first class charts. And this program that I'm thinking of, uh, that I'm working on, it's a working progress. I'm talking to people around the world about it. Um, I'm hoping that somebody has the initiative to see the the timing, how good the timing is with this program, how good the craft is. It's just a tool. And again, my knowledge, I've got 15 years in this whole thing. And I've, I've gained some information along the way. And uh, yeah, we're going to go forward and we're going to create fantastic charts. Um, guys, uh, to all of you who joined me tonight, um, thank you very much. Your participation was great. Thank you. The guys who uh, uh, asked a question there, uh, Roger had to go, but he stuck out for, for a while there. All of you who, who stuck it out, thank you. Um, please, I will put this video up on YouTube in full HD in uh, 1080p. Um, uh, tonight so it'll be available from from tomorrow so you can skim through it and see uh, if there's any parts that you'd like to look at again in high high definition uh, guys next month i'm talking about the south african crowd um big big month september in fact the end of this month we've got the albert falls tournament coming up uh, this weekend I, th I think it's this weekend or when is it no when is the Clan William? There's a tournament at Clan William. So get your Clan William chart. There's your Albert Falls tournament. Jeez, we've sold so many Albert Falls tournaments. I don't know if there's anybody left that hasn't got one. And if you haven't got one, hi, boo. Sorry for you. Um, there's Vitbank. Our Vitbank HD chart is available. Another great seller. Uh, after that, later in the year, we've got uh, the uh, eBay Super Final at G copies that chart is available so yo, it's going to be exciting there's a lot of uh, things happening especially in South Africa round about now um, some great charts available for you guys so yeah get your charts give Colleen a buzz order them sorted next month uh, fish tech live we're going to be talking about you know what we're going to be talking about what happened at the Albert Falls tournament I'm hopefully going to be there and maybe take some photographs and get some information and maybe have a post Albert Falls tournament conversation. That'll be interesting. That's something to, to look forward to. So guys, thank you very much. Everybody that, that joined me, um, Michael says, uh, nationals, Alberts. Yes, there we go. No, there we go. We're on track. Good night, everybody. I see we're a little bit over. We're three minutes over. Have a great evening and I'll see you next month. Uh, Fish Tech Live episode, uh, season three, episode nine. Good night, everybody.